everyone! Thanks for stopping by to view this tutorial on these really cute gift boxes with the peekaboo window and the little compartments on the inside. In a moment, I'm going to take you right around and so you can see exactly what I'm talking about and you can see the different things that we're going to make to put inside as well as some really inexpensive ways to uh, gift give to your crafting friends, planner friends, and they don't even have to be uh, crafty friends. You can put anything in these. Okay, so up close, the one I'm teaching in the tutorial is this one, but you don't have to use the five sheets of paper that I do. You can use whatever paper that you would like. And this one has the ribbon on. I don't have any ribbons on these. But you can see how cool the little peekaboo window um, is with the plastic. And it shows all the goodies inside. This one was also made. I have not filled it yet. So some ideas, and I'll open up a couple of these. Get that off there. So inside, and there's a plastic cover here, and that is optional. And I know there's a glare, so I'm gonna kinda prop it up a little bit. Here's one with some ideas for your crafting friends, maybe your planner friends. But we've got paper clips that we can make, some lace, some ribbon, little bits of this and that, washi tape, um, little containers of little beads or prills or uh, glitter. I put in a stickles and some loose flowers in here and some other things. I'll show you another one. And there's also a little uh, tablet in there. All right. So here is one as well, and you can kind of see what's in there. General idea. Take off my little plastic here. And I've got some little embellishments, some flowers, lace, ribbon, a little tablet back behind. Made some paper clip embellishments washi tape and we got some little bows with a gem in there the stickles is right there and some flowers and some goodies in there so those are just some ideas I mean you can do whatever it is that you would like to do on these and some bling and whatnot so um, I will be doing a giveaway um, on my YouTube channel, and I believe one of these are going to go on our JS Hobbies and Crafts uh, blog. Materials list for our box. We don't need much. I'm using the Stamperia Vintage Rose Paper Pack and it's gorgeous. Now there are 10 double-sided sheets in this and um, you can make two boxes with one of these packs. You'll want um, at least one 8.5 by 11 clear plastic sheet and um, this is 0 .007 thickness. It's a medium weight so that is what goes underneath the lid so that you can peek through. If you are wanting to also have a piece like I showed you in the beginning that will fit over the bottom box for presentation to keep everything down in there besides your lid doing that, uh, you'll need a second sheet. You'll need one sheet of 8.5 by 11 uh, cardstock. This is from Coordinations. It's the 65 pound chipboard. I am making mine out of chipboard because it's durable and if, when I go to ship any of these boxes like I will be giving away some of these gift boxes in a YouTube video for giveaways um, I don't want it to smash I want it to stay good um, so I'm gonna be using about two and a half sheets of medium weight chipboard I'm using black um, you can always use medium weight craft colored if you are going to use the craft colored, you probably want to use a craft sheet of cardstock rather than the black. 
and um, two and a half. So if you have scraps, leftovers like this, you can use this or just a half sheet. Um, I am going to be using both score tape and also my art glitter designer dries clear adhesive glue and I have my little metal tip on the top. Um, I'm going to be using a variety of different score tape uh, whiffs just to make uh, it easy for me and quicker for me um, when I'm showing this tutorial. But all, if all you have is a quarter inch, um, one of these will do you just fine. I am using a quarter inch, half, and and this width. This is a little bit wider. And like I said, you don't have to have this. This is more expensive stuff uh, the wider you go. So uh, materials list for making the little gifts inside. Um, what I'm going to be showing how I did that. So remember, a lot of what I show you right now can be broken up into several gift boxes. So you're definitely not going to use everything I show you in one box. It's meant to be split out over several boxes to spread your money. And you'll probably have leftovers for yourself. So let's just say, uh, to start off, maybe a couple pieces of 8.5 by 11 white cardstock. And I'm using 110 pound here. You can use 65 pound. Uh, however, I like the 110 pound. It's a little more stiffer for what I'm going to use this for. Uh, washi tapes. Um, again, you're, you're not going to give a whole roll of washi tape in the gift unless you want to. We're just going to use a portion of different ones that will match in to our paper. And I found that these colors look really nice with almost anything that we use in here. So I'll show you. I'm going to use this one. And it is a pink with gold dot. This one is by Love My Washi Tape. This one, it says the different days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I think you can see that. This is a pink. And then we have like a plaid. Now, um, you like I said, look in your uh, washi tape stash. Do you have something that's going to work with uh, your paper? So save a little money. Uh, I have a ton of washi tape, so I have a lot of different uh, things that I could be using. And some of these have already been used. Okay. The Jolie's Boutique. They are inexpensive, and this is something that I can cut and make into three different uh, gift boxes. Okay. Uh, the flowers here that I have, I think I'll use these two here. Um, these are the Kaiser Craft uh, Paper Blooms. These are good for gluing on the top of your paper clips or just putting a few in the box for flowers. Uh, this one's called Misty and this one's called Sea Breeze. I thought those would look nice in there. Okay. Flower packs. Now I've already gotten into this one, but these here I could separate into several gift boxes. And I have some gold large uh, paper clips, and you can get those at the dollar store, these. Um, the Tim Holtz. Now this I've already taken a few out. You'll have plenty in here for several boxes. Uh, these are the cork vials. You can also use the domed cork ones. Uh, but this is what I can put maybe pearls in, some glitter, uh, little beads. Uh, lace. Lace is always a good thing. Any lace. Uh, I have a little pack of lace there. Um, some of the flatback trim, uh, pearl trim. I have uh, Tim Holtz, the cameo frames, and there's four in a pack. So when doing these um, little gifts and stuff, you'll want to look for something that has a variety, more than one thing in there, so it does save money. Grab some ribbon. I've got pink and blue, some bling on a roll, and I have some uh, 3D Zot singles where they are actually 
And these are really good because they stick, but they're individually wrapped. And if there's anything else, um, you know, we want to put in there, we will. This is just a uh, preliminary type um, list and it's so optional. You don't even have to do uh, what I'm doing. Also, another tip is for little gifts is check your stash to see uh, if you have any new things that maybe you've only used one out of the package, but it's still new. Uh, you know, like this. Here's something I had purchased. It's part of my personal stash. And there were several several of these little things on there. I might throw in one or two uh, of these little things. Another thing that I plan on putting in mine is, now this is either at a Heidi Swap or the Project Life, where there's the little card kits. Uh, you can separate them out, uh, grab what you want, and put these in there too. And I'm going to include this in mine. But those are excellent ones to get at because, look, you've got either a tag or a special little card uh, that they can actually use, whether it's for their planner or their journal or their mini album or whatever craft project that they work in. Another thing that I'm going to be doing is sticking a full um, thing of stickles in it, and that's optional. Tools and things you're going to need is you'll want a cutting mat and a craft knife, and you'll want a new blade. Scissors pencil with an eraser, um, a ruler. You may want some regular binder clips or clamps. A scoring board will be helpful. And you will want a paper cutter. I'm going to be using this blade to score my chipboard. I don't want to cut it all the way through, but this is a good one to use. Um, I also uh, can use this as my paper cutter as well. Uh, normally I use a large rotary style, but unfortunately with a rotary style, um, I cannot lift this blade to score the chipboard. So that is why this comes in handy. Whoops. So let's get on to making our uh, box. And then after we make our box and it's complete, that's when I'll kind of, if you're interested, you can stay and uh, we'll put together some goodies and uh, make a nice presentation. We're going to start with uh, building the box and we will do the lid after we have completed the box. Um, what we're going to do is we are going to measure in two inches and score this chipboard and then we're going to do that on each side and remember you don't need much um, pressure down when doing this just uh, make sure you've got a two inch I'm going to bring mine up here and score so once you have it all scored we're going to take our scissors and we are either use your scissors or your craft knife. I have a heavy duty scissors that will cut through this. All we're going to do is cut out these little squares on each side. Um, if you scored too hard and you feel that it went through too, too, too much, uh, don't worry, we will be reinforcing this. So let's start by cutting out all our squares. Got mine all out. Let's just flip this over and carefully bend up our size sides. Again, if you feel that you have scored too hard with that blade and it went through, do not worry. Uh, we will be reinforcing the bottom of this box. Okay, so we have that. Let's grab our sheet of paper. Grab this out of your paper pack. It looks like this on one side and here's on the other. Okay, normally uh, with uh, when you wrap around the edges, we would leave uh, some tabs off to the side on this. But unfortunately, we do need these clippings. So line this up, looking where it's all even on either side. You'll want a pencil for this. 
And if you don't get it exactly even, it's okay because we will be wrapping the edges of here. All we're going to do is use our pencil and go around that chipboard, the edges here. Okay, we'll set this off to the side. Now we're going to cut out each one of these little squares. And these are the ones that's very important that we keep. So let's cut those out. And you can erase any pencil marks that you might have showing. Okay, so let's set these off to the side where they don't get lost. Grab our scoring board really quick. And all we're going to do is find, line up where the edge of your paper is. I still got some pencil mark. I'll make sure I get all that off. All right. So I'm going to line this up and from the corner of this, as best I can anyway. Corner of this, I'm just going to score to the other corner. Same over here, line it up. And we'll turn it and do the same thing. That's just going to help us with uh, getting this to fit. I think I got it off a little there. And you don't have to score hard, just lightly enough there. And then I'm just going to bend. I'm not going to crease real hard, just in case. I just want to bend it up a little. Okay, so this is where, um, and we're going to need this tool shortly. This is where you're, you can either use score tape or you can use your glue. Um, all we're going to do is glue this down or use score tape. Myself, I'm going to use score tape because I can make sure if I have score tape all over the back of this that after I burnish it, less chance for bubbling up or uh, wrinkles. So when I put score tape on this, I'm just going to make sure that I get it all the way around uh, these edges and where that crease is and in here. Now you can alternate between getting your score tape and glue in between so you're not using so much. Um, me, for convenient purposes, I'm using a variety of different sizes um, for uh, laying my score tape. If all you have is a quarter inch, that will work too. And again, you can alternate some of your glue in. So I'm going to get score tape on this and um, I'll be right back. I've got score tape all over the back of mine, as you can see. Now the easiest way, because score tape will grab, so I don't want to pull it all off at once, um, I'm going to lay this down where it fits. Make sure that it looks all good here. The only thing I'm going to start off with is pulling off this top one. Score tape off that. And then I will be able to. And this just helps from if I was to remove the score tape off everything, it would be sticking while I'm trying to line it up. So I'm just going to plop that right over. And if you get it a little bit off, don't worry about it because we have a wrap around these rough edges. Okay, so I got that down. I can just flip this up, remove all my score tape now, and I'm going to press it all down. So let's do that. Once you got it down, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our score tape or our glue is down, especially in those creases where we had scored. Okay. So at this point we want to carefully move this up just kind of bring up that side on each one. If you see some wrinkles coming about, you can just use your burnishing tool to 
help with that, but you want to do a real slow. And bring that up. There. So now when you have your box up and together, it should look something like this. Okay. So when you place this, if you turn it over and you have some um, of this hanging over the edge, don't worry about it. We're just going to kind of push that forward. And uh, when we seam together these edges, it'll be just fine. Just leave them. I'm going to leave mine. Okay, so we need to grab into that piece of black cardstock that we set aside. Cut four pieces that are one and a half inch by two inches. Grab your scoring board and we are going to place these where it is one and a half inches across and we'll just score at the three quarter mark on all of these. And then we're just going to fold on all of these. Okay, so really quick I'm going to show you what we're going to do. We're going to put glue on half of this. We can just flip this over now. We'll put glue on half of this and we will place it right at the corner and the edge of our chipboard. Now let's try. There we go. All right, I'm getting a little clogged. Okay, so I got that. I'm just going to pinch it. The, the peak is right here, the open ends are this way, and I'm going to place it right at the edge, making sure I do not go over the bottom part of that. And I'm going to do my next one, half on that, my peak is going this way, so, and then I'm going to place it at the edge of the chipboard. If you have paper overhanging, it's not at the edge of that, it's the chipboard. So and I'm going to place that. Okay. I'm going to flip this around now so my flaps are up here. And now we will place the flaps down here. So on half of this and place it at the corner of the chipboard. And same over here. Okay. Now all we have to do is if you have is pull these corners together and wrap this around. However, if you have a little bit of paper hanging over, that's where you're going to just kind of move it in. Kind of press it in. Bend it back. Because what's going to happen is when this comes together, that's going to go in your corner if you have any. If you don't, your seams will just seam together. So one thing I want to make sure that I do when I pull this back is get right here, right on the edge. Okay, I'm going to pull this in, making sure my top is even, and I will pull this over and hold. And with this glue, it doesn't take long for it to grab. You want to try and get it as tight as you can. Okay, for the inside, just make sure that that little lip is pushed in the crease. See? Okay, we're going to go and do this for all of them. So I have a lip right here of paper. So I'm just going to kind of bend that back so when I pull this in, it comes like that. And I'm going to make sure I get right there on the edge of that piece. I'm going to pull in my sides. Whoops. Pull in my sides. And wrap that. And hold. Okay. Next one. Wrap it over and hold. My last one right here, and I don't look like it doesn't look like I have much of a lip there, and that's 
perfectly fine and fold and hold. Okay, just make sure those things are down. So this is what you should have. Okay, let's reinforce this bottom just in case one of you um, did uh, score too hard through. Grab your black piece of cardstock. What you're going to want to do is put this up on from the top down to where the other part, the bottom of this is. And we're just going to make a pencil mark and then we're going to first trim off that. I did. I trimmed that piece off. So now when I lay this down, this should be a nice fit. So what we need to do now is we need four strips that are one and a half inch wide. Okay, I got my four strips. This is where we're going to grab our scoring board out. We are one and a half inch across and at three quarters of an inch we're going to score each one of these. And then we're going to fold. Okay, I've got mine all folded. This is the same concept of where we um, did our side. We will apply glue to one side. We will line it up with the edge of the chipboard like so, all the way around. And I've got all of these on. I'm going to work on my last one and glue that down. And then all we have to do is apply glue right on the seam up here and we will flip those over. So let's do that. And then we will make sure it's all pressed in, wipe up any glue. Sure your corners are good and we will have something that will wrap around our corners so not to worry. Okay looking at the bottom of my box if you have any uh, little stamps or whatever like mine it says uh, I've got this stamped on here original handmade by Shelley Geigel you can apply glue and stick that right on the bottom. In your paper pack, you will find this sheet on the back. It's pink. Now I'm going to turn mine like this because I like to start from measuring over this way. and I want my stripes to be end up this. So I try to stay consistent. So looking at it like this, we're going to measure over two and a quarter inches and cut. We'll measure over again two and a quarter inches and cut. And one more time, two and a quarter inches and cut. This piece that's left over, stick back with your reserve or scrap pile. We'll set this off to the side. Okay, here we go. We have 12 inches by two and a quarter inches. I'm going to grab my quarter inch score tape and at the end of two of these, I'm going to try and keep it right on the edge there, I'm going to place a strip of score tape. And then I'm going to trim off any score tape that is peeking over. Okay, so for me, I want to keep this lined up straight. I'm going to use my scoring board to help me out here. So I'm going to grab one that has the score tape at the end. This one has the score tape at this end, but it's now going to be over here. What I'm going to do is remove the score tape, and I'm using the board here to keep this edge straight, and I'm just going to bring this over the top, keeping it all straight, and press. And I'm going to do the same thing on this one. Keep it straight. Lining it up. 
And there we go. And I can put this away for now. Okay, so there's different ways to do this. What we're going to do is lay this, and I'll have an overhang to start. I'm going to lay this at the bottom edge and wrap this all the way around. And when we get to the point where we're at the end over here, we'll want to cut this, trim this to where it's only overlaying over this edge slightly. So this is trickier than what it seems. So um, I am going to be uh, placing score tape on mine. You can definitely use glue. Um, it is up to you. Now for me, I laid a piece of score tape. I'll use glue on the lip that flaps over. But to keep this under control so this doesn't all grab on me, I'm just going to pull back a little at a time. And I'm going to make sure that I have some overhanging over here, off to the side. So I'm just going to line this up with the bottom of the box as best I can. Trying to keep it even. That's the part that is hard. Wrap it around. And I will continue around the box. Once you've made sure that your glue is down and it's on the box, the next thing that all we're going to do is come into the sides where that corner is and clip. This will help us with our wrapping. Okay, I'm going to use glue on my lip here. Before I place anything, I want to kind of give it a little bend to help it. Okay. When you're doing your glue or your score tape, score tape it won't matter because it's already on there, but make sure you get right on that lip. On your, whoops, I got crazy. Okay. And then you'll want to make sure that you got the rest of this. So I've got one side with glue on it. I'll just push this back here. And all I'm going to do is just press and roll. In the corners is where you're going to want to hold it and make sure that it is in that corner good, pressed in. Okay. And you can even use your burnishing tool to help it out. Just stick. Okay, and then all I'm going to do now is I'm going to move around and keep doing that same thing. I've got mine down. Now, um, if you got your band on crooked or you just it's just barely coming over, uh, you can add a, a strip of paper for a band around the inside to help it. Um, when I was experimenting with my boxes, um, same thing. <coughs> Excuse me. I had to add a band around it. It's not a big deal. But you don't want to add it now. You will want to add it after we get our paper and our inserts in here. Um, I did it before, and I think the doing it after is a cleaner way. So uh, we are all set to go. We're ready to make our inserts. So I decided to use a half sheet. I'm six inches across, and I'm 12 inches long. And that is... Um, because some of you don't have the extra scrap pieces, maybe you had scraps left over from a mini album or other chipboard uh, project. So what we're gonna get off of this is we need three strips that are 12 inches long. Each one is gonna be one and three quarters inch wide. So let's cut those strips. So this is what we got out of our cut. Uh, keep this, don't throw it away. Okay, so what we're going to do is, before we start cutting these all down, we're going to try it with one first. We're going to measure over 8 inches and cut. This is what you should have, and you're going to keep this. 
So take one of these. We do have a back support and we're going to place this in the back and it should fit in there. If it's too tight, it does not fit, then you can trim off until it does. So I think that I am good. It will place right against that back wall there. Okay, if you're good, you know what your measurement is, you will cut one more at a inch. We will keep this for sure. So I got one here, and I got one to fit right here. Okay. So let's start with these. In your paper pack, you will find this sheet. It's the blue striped. On the back, it's blue. Now I'm going to look at my paper like this. I'm going to need two strips that are each two and a quarter inch wide. So let's cut those. We can stick this off to the side. We'll get back into that shortly. Okay. So for these, we're going to want our pencil. All we're going to do is lay this down so that we are edge to edge. We'll just grab a pencil and make a mark. Now all we have to do is double these up and cut. Okay, You will keep these. We can just stick these off to the side. Okay, so for this, what it is, is we only need one side completely covered and we are going to end up wrapping it over to the back side, which the back side places against here as a support for the inside insert. So I, when I do this, I'm just going to start off with just putting the glue on my chipboard here. So I am going to begin by putting glue on one side. Okay and I'm going to place it down the bottom. And then what I can do is just make sure that that glue is down. Next, I'm going to run some glue right at the top there edge of that chipboard, and then I'm going to apply the glue to the paper. And then all I have to do is just wrap it over and smooth it out. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing with this. Apply my glue, place it down, apply the glue up here, and roll it. Okay, I have my two pieces. And all I'm going to do is just stick them right in here. We're not going to glue them in yet. Let's see. One of them. There we go. And then this one, right like that. We won't glue that in. We'll just set that off to the side. Our other long piece, we're going to start off by measuring over 7 and 7 eighths of an inch and cut. You can keep this piece, set it off to the side. Now, place it in here, and this should fit nice. If you are bowing like this, you will need to trim it a little more because bowing like that is an indication it's just too long. So you should be able to just slide that right on in. Grab this sheet out, and I am looking at it like this. Measure over 3 and 5 eighths of an inch and cut. So this is what you have. Stick this one off to the side. Looking at your sheet like this, measure over eight and three quarters of an inch and cut. You'll have this left over. Just stick that off to the side. Okay, so for this we're going to just flip that over. We're going to apply glue to this side only. And what we want to do is when we place this down, we are going to place that so we have some flaps on either side that are the same. So I'm going to begin. And we do not want to apply the glue to the paper, especially on those ends. And you'll see why in a moment. So I've got glue and I'm going to place this down at the bottom 
making sure I have even amount of flaps on each side or close to and then I'll just flip this over okay again all we're going to do now is we're going to place some glue right at the top of this and then on our chipboard only just like this and then all we're going to do now is we are going to grab it and roll it over and press and we'll do the same over here if you have a little bit of an overhang this is where you're going to want to grab your craft knife oh, what did I do with mine and you can just trim that I don't have much I maybe have a sixteenth of an inch perfect okay so here's the bottom you can see the black and the top is rolled. We're just going to slide our scissors in underneath and snip on each side. Now what we're going to do is pull this back to where we can see the edge of the chipboard. And we'll do it on all the sides. These are what are going to attach to these. Again, we're not going to add glue um, to these to, until we are done getting all of our pieces in. And just remember the black goes down and we'll just slide that right on in there. And as you can see from the seams, it will blend in nicely. So we have that. Okay, let's set that off to the side and let's grab one of these. Now if you place this in over here, it's also our marker to how wide we want to be over here. Okay, so our next step is to grab this. So these should all be the same, just about actually. They're not, one is slightly longer. So that is good, I checked. Okay, you got two that are the same. You have one that's slightly longer. We're gonna take the longer one. And we are going to just place that right down. And you're gonna leave yourself about a half inch. Half inch. And then we're gonna take our pencil and just make a mark like that and we're going to trim. We won't have an overhang on off one side. That's where those little pieces like this that we kept are gonna come in handy. So let's trim that. This longer piece we will set off to the side. So what we're gonna do is the same thing we did before, but first we have to attach our little pieces. And I'm going to grab this one and we're going to cut this in half. So this is about two inches or so. We're going to measure over and I think the writing goes this way and it does. So I'm looking at it like this. Measure over one inch and cut. Okay so I did that and the next thing we want to do is on each piece score at a half inch. And you can actually use either side of these. I think they're pretty much the same. Well, close to. So we'll score each one at a half inch and then we are going to fold. One thing is we do have to trim these down, I forgot. So if you have your pieces like this, I've doubled mine up, you'll want to measure over one and three quarters of an inch and cut those. I got mine trimmed down, so now I am going to fold. Okay, so before we wrap this up, we do want to attach these. And these are attached the same way we've done before. We're just going to do half. And then we're going to bring it up to the edge, making sure that they are top to bottom fitting, like so. 
I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to do the same thing. Half of this. Bring it up to that chipboard edge. Okay, now we are ready. Okay, so I got these flaps. We don't want to pull them back because they'll get caught underneath. So we're going to start by applying it to the chipboard only. You're definitely going to watch what you're doing here. So you're going to bring this to the edge of the chipboard only, all the way down. So your flap is here. If you bend it back, you should be at about the edge of your paper. Now I'm just going to smooth this out and now I'm just going to add my glue to the top and then on the chipboard and the edge of the chipboard is going to be where your crease is there for that fold and then we're going to roll it and we'll probably have to do some trimming on the bottom which we do so now I've rolled Let's get our cutting mat really quick and we will just trim off that excess. You see the bottom where the black is? We'll just flip that over. We do need to snip. Just place that in until you hit your chipboard and snip. And then we will fold these back to the edge of the chipboard. Really easy. Make sure you get that pretty straight there. If you find that you did not get any glue towards the edge of your chipboard, you'll want to add some. Okay, I'm going to wipe off any excess glue that is on the spine there so that it does not stick to my paper when I place this because we don't want to add glue yet. So the idea of this is this will be placed against this and this will be placed against this. We'll just slide that in like so. And we don't have to worry about um, uh, where this exactly is supposed to place until we get our other pieces. Okay, so we'll set this off to the side. So on these, what we're going to do is cut these down the length to three and three quarters. And what we're going to do is make sure they fit before we do anything. And I'm just pulling this back. If I slide that in there, that should fit. Keeping it straight. Now if you find that if you have these in there and they are bowing really bad, trim off a little bit. So you have this sheet left. We're going to measure over four and a quarter inches and cut. You can set this off to the side. Now one of these are going to end up being piggybacked because there is not wide enough. So we'll work on that one in a minute. This one should be just fine. We have enough room here. We have enough room to roll. And we need to do the same thing we did before on this. So we need to cut this to one inch by one and three quarters of an inch, our little leftover. Okay, and we're just going to score these each at a half inch. And we will then fold our score lines. We're going to do the same thing we've done before. Apply your glue to half and bring it to the edge on each side of that. So you should have your flaps on now. Now we're going to do the same thing we've done before. We're going to apply our glue to the chipboard only. We will place it down. Be sure to not get your flaps caught underneath. And you'll move it to the edge. So right now you should have flaps. Your piece should look like this. Let's apply our glue to this and we will wrap it over. Okay. Grab your cutting mat and your blade, and we'll cut off any excess. Here is the bottom where you can see the black. 
Let's put our scissors in and snip to that chipboard and now we will fold back all of our flaps. Okay, so we got the black that goes down and this goes against that print, the blue goes against this. And we'll just slide that right in to match up side by side with this one for now. Now what we want to do is grab that other piece and we will have to piggyback some of the the uh, thing here. So we should have just enough to on the edge, maybe not quite a half inch, but it will do. So all we're going to do with this is grab our glue. Before we do that, guess what? One of these. Cut it down to one and three quarters by one inch. And we're going to score down the middle and fold. I almost made a boo-boo. Okay, let's attach to our side. And I'll do the same on this one. Okay, now <laughs> let's add some glue. And make sure your flap is out. And if I pull that back, I can see where the edge is. And then all we're going to do is add glue here and just straight up. Careful not to get that flap. And we will roll. So now all we want to do is lay this down. We will have a seam. So let's add the glue slightly on this one, down, and I'll line that up as best I can, making sure it's down, and now I'll trim. Okay. Alright, we will slip this in to the top and snip and we'll fold these back. We have just enough to grab on to our little sides. Okay, wipe off any excess glue so it does not stick while we check this. And we'll just slip that right on in there. So when we pull in the sides here, it'll look good. Okay, so the first thing that we want to do, let me put these out is we're going to glue these in first. So let's add our glue. Make sure you get pretty covered because I'm going to slip that back. Now remember the fold is at the top, the black is at the bottom, and if you would like you can add uh, some glue right in the corner in there for that chipboard to grab. And we'll just slide that in. And this is where some clamps are binder clips, if you have binder clips. to hold that down and in place. Okay. This one, we're going to do the same thing. We'll take that right on out, add our glue, and we will place it. Again, binder clips work really well. Or if you have these, these work well. Okay, so I think that's in there just fine. So I'm going to let this sit for just a moment. Okay, I think that that is fine. This is what ours should all look like, the same. Okay, this is our middle. The black goes down, so our middle fits right in here. Um, we want to glue this down first, but we do want to use this as a brace. And when we do that, we'll just push in the side, and we'll have our glue on the ends here, and then we will just push it in. You will not put glue on this yet. So let's get started. And um, one thing I will tell you you definitely want to do is get glue right on that black, right on the edges there and all over here but so that when it does fit in there the 
chipboard grabs against the supports. So let's add that glue. Okay, so I have this here so it will guide me. I'm just going to kind of pull it back against the thing. And I'm going to slide this right on down like so. Making sure this is straight. As soon as I know that I have it in the right spot, I can press this down against the wall over there. I'm trying to keep that straight. Press down my flaps. I can remove this. And I'll mop up any excess glue. If you want to use your binder clips, you can. But it should look pretty good. Okay, it is time to get this one in. And we're going to do the same thing. Apply it to where that chipboard is. So just watch what you're doing. The black goes down and the blue will go against the blue. And then this will go against that. So I'm just going to slide that in. That looks pretty straight. Okay, this is where I like to use a binder clip over on this side. Or a clamp. Make sure that's all down good, my flaps. I'm going to let that set for a minute. While that's going, um, make sure this is the one without the uh, seam. The one with the seam will go up here. This one's easy. We know it goes straight across from this one. So we can start getting that one ready to go. Make sure I'm straight. Okay. And then I'm going to push it in. If anything seeps out, of course, I'm going to mop up. And I'll clip it. Okay, this one now. Now this one we're just going to go in between the two. Now the fun thing about these boxes is that you don't always have to have it in this. I mean you could have this lower, you can use smaller, you can bring this bar over and have a, a larger over there. It's all up to you. When I was making a bunch um, of these just to practice and do them different ways to see how it comes out. Um, I, ha I moved mine around, had different compartments, different sizes, and over here is where I'm going to want to use my binder clip. So, and you should look something like this. If you have any glue squirting out or excess, mop it up. But that is how it looks. Okay, for those of you that have any issues, um, like around here you're just too uneven, if it's, if it's not bad, leave it alone. If you need to add a strip, you can add it right here, but wait until uh, we are completely done with uh, doing the lid and use the leftovers to run a band around. And then what you'll do is you'll run the band up to here, cut it, run a band through here, and, and whatnot. Okay, I'm going to give that just a moment to dry. Okay, mine is all dry. Now we move on to the lid. So what we're going to do on each side is we're going to measure in one and seven eighths of an inch, and we're going to score each side that measurement. So one and seven eighths. Make sure I'm straight. And we're just going to score. And I'll go around and do that all the way on each side. I've got mine all scored. Let's grab our craft knife or heavy duty uh, scissors and we're going to cut out those squares again. I've got all mine cut out. Okay, so for the top of the lid, I chose this print on the back. It looks like that. So let's line this up. This is going to be different than the bottom of the box and what we do because we're going to wrap our edges. Make sure I'm straight here. Okay, grab your pencil. 
So you're and what you're going to want to do is do a light line. So at the top here, I think you can see, we're going to draw a straight line right here. And then right down here, a straight line, a straight line. Now going across, we're going to do just a light dotted line. So I've got my dotted line here and here. On the straight line is where we're going to cut. We're not going to cut on the dotted line. And we'll erase any whoop. Straight line only. And we'll erase any pencil mark. Okay, so here is our dotted line. We'll just leave that alone. I'm going to grab my pencil on these straight lines. Okay. Next thing we're going to want to do is grab our scoring board. Let's grab our thing. And we're going to do the same thing we did before, as best we can anyway. And we will score. And we'll do it over here. And we'll come over here and we have our dotted line so we can line that up. Okay. So for now that we have that dotted line, we can just erase those. That's just a guide for us. Okay. I'm going to fold back the other way. I think that's the best way because this is going to come over. Okay, so we got that, and you don't have to fold and crease real hard. There it is. Let's grab this and turn it over and carefully fold. Now before we place our paper, we're going to verify that your, your scoring marks were correct. So I'm just going to bring my edges together on all of this and make sure that this is going to slide on top. And I have these edges together, these, and this is going to fit perfectly. Okay. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to flip it over and we're going to apply score tape like we did before all over this. So let's get that ready. If you're not using score tape, you can use glue. One quick, quick tip is when you're applying your score tape, make sure you do not get your tabs on the same thing. We want to keep these all separate. So when I'm laying my score tape, I'm actually pulling this back and then laying it across. Okay, I've got my score tape down and I will tell you that this part, the first ones, the sides you're going to want to do is the sides that have your score tape and the flap, flaps. Okay, so to make it easy for me, I'm going to fold this back and I have these flaps. So I've got these pulled back. Okay, this may seem a little tricky. This is actually going to be our side hinge to hinge these together. So I'm going to release the score tape. Okay, and I'm going to bring and line this up. I can use, I can fold this back for now to line up to make sure that this is going to fit accurately side to side. Again, we do have a little strip down here, so if you get a little bit off, uh, that's okay. Okay, so for now, let's just fold back so the sticky is towards us, and we can lay this down, right like that. Okay. Let's fold this side back for now. 
right on that score mark. So we got this. We've got stickies here. Okay. We'll pull this up. We'll bring our corners together right down here. And we will push this over like so. Okay. Pull this side over. Your corners are going to meet. And we're going to wrap that around the edge. Okay. I'm going to remove this side that has the other flaps. I'm going to remove this. And I'm going to push this back behind. So all I see is this. And I'm going to remove the score tape off this part as well. So I've got my other flaps uh, underneath there with the score tape. And I'm going to bring this down. Okay, I'm going to pull up my sides so that they are at a corner. I'm going to flip this up. Now that will work a little bit better. And I will pull this on over to the side, keeping that corner together. Okay, this side. Bring your corners together and wrap it. All right, bring these flaps out. And you can just kind of, if you have overhang, I'm not going to clip mine. I'm just going to wrap right over. I'm just going to make sure that score tape's creased in there. Like so. Okay, now I can remove the score tape off this side and get that creased in there. And all we're going to do is wrap that up now. Smooth it out. And we'll do the other side. Okay. And we will wrap up. So this is what the top looks like and your sides will look like until we get our trim. And if you have any overhang like that over the side, just press it down. In your paper pack, you will have a full sheet of this. Now, I, did, I forgot to turn the camera on, but what you're going to have is pieces off to the side like this, and we are going to cut. And when you cut, you'll cut right on the edge all the way down to release those three tags. And then we'll set those off to the side. Okay, now that we have that, we can flip this over. We're going to cut three strips. Each strip is going to be one inch wide. So three one inch wide strips off this. Put the rest off to the side. I'm going to set this off to the side for now. And move over. So on two of these, we're going to do what we've done before. Uh, my score tape. I'm going to use my quarter inch score tape. On the edge, I'm going to lay a piece on two of these. And I'm going to trim off any overhang. Okay. We're going to do the same thing we did before. Here's the other one. Here's one with score tape at the edge, and here's the other one. So this one's going to go down here. And I'm just going to overlap them using this as my guide to keep it straight. Okay. And I'll do the same thing with this one. Keep it straight. Okay. Either you can use glue or score tape along the back side here. 
I'm going to use score tape. I've got my score tape on. Now before we do anything, we're going to grab our ruler and it's going to be from the bottom of the chipboard over. We are going to make a mark with our pencil and we'll do it three different places here. So I think right here. And we'll do three places on each side. And I'll be doing going around and do it in on all sides. Once you have that half inch mark from the top, now you can go ahead. And we will peel off the score tape or you use your glue. And that is going to be our alignment to keep us straight all the way around the box, giving us a half inch or so lip. So I am going to start laying mine, and I'm only going to peel it back because I'm using score tape and I don't want it all to grab at once. I'm going to just peel back so much at a time. I'm going to have an overhang off the side, and I will press. And then I can wrap this to be even over there. And I'm going to continue. I'll pull my score tape out so far, continue and wrap. So let's all do that. Once you have this on your lid, make sure your glue or your score tape is down really good. And we'll just go into the corners and snip. Okay. I'm going to start bending mine over and making sure when I get into the corner I push in really good. And then once I get it all bent I will smooth it out making sure that score tape is down. Make sure that's down. You can use your bone folder to really score or push down, burnish that down. You're making sure you've got it in the corners there. Okay, so you should have a nice looking box. Let's give it a shot before we cut into the lid, and you should fit nicely. And you might have a snug fit too. Either or. Okay. So for this part, if you have a scrap chipboard, cut a piece that is one and a half inch wide by about eight inches or so. Something that's just at least going to fit in there. If you have no more chipboard, what you can do is off your cardstock, you will cut a piece that is three inches wide and you will score it at one and a half inches and you can turn it over like this and you can apply glue to keep it together for you to thicken it up okay so you have this all this is going to do and then you'll cut it down to fit to the inside of your box mine's uh, loose and it doesn't matter okay all it is is a shim for us for when we are penciling in our little cutout window and I like to do the cutout window last not before I um, put the paper on so I'm just gonna draw a line here and I'll move this over to the side Oops. I got a little off there we're just using it as a straight edge All the, all the way around the inside. Okay. I'm gonna erase anything that goes over. Okay, so if you have the chipboard, that makes it really easy. And remember, you want a new blade. Is all you're gonna do is begin to cut 
you know, several strokes to get through and cut this out. If you're using the little cardstock piece, you can use this as a guide as well. Just be very careful. And we will just follow that line. And we will cut this out. Okay, so just carefully don't pull. If you didn't get all the way through, you're definitely going to want to get your blade back in there and get it until you can lift it out. Because we are cutting through that paper. And you should have a nice clean edge if you are using a nice new blade. So this is what we have. I'm just going to flip that over. Grab your 8.5 by 11 clear sheet, cut it to 6.5 by 6.5. This sheet will fit perfectly over that opening. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my quarter inch score tape and I'm going to write on this on the inside here against the edge. I'm going to lay my score tape one thing right around there. And I'll show you right there. Now, on the plastic sheet, what you'll want to do is on the outside rim here, the edge, we're going to lay one row of score tape all the way around like a picture frame. And I'll show you mine. I've got mine on. So I'm going to remove the score tape backing off both pieces now. Okay, all I'm going to do now is lay this down. and then I will smooth it down. Ensure I got that score tape down. Okay, so you have your little window in there. So you can either be done right now or uh, place some paper over this. And that's what I'm gonna do right now. So you should have enough on this sheet to um, as far as spacing going across, what we're going to do. But first, let's so that we can save some of these tags down here, let's measure over 8 and 1 16th of an inch and cut. We're going to start there. All right, you can stick this off to the side. This should fit in here. You'll have a little bit of play in here, but that's all right. Now, looking at your sheet like this, you're going to measure over one and a half inch and cut, and then you'll continue on to move over. You will end up with four one and a half inch wide strips. All right, you should have exactly that. If you cut where um, I showed you on the paper for your tags. Okay, so all we're going to do here is we are going to place this in. We're going to glue these down. And what you can do is lay your first two pieces, like for instance, I'm going to glue this one down and I'll just pull it down as far as it'll go. Then I'm going to take this one and I'll glue it down to the corner so it matches up with the sides. Then what I'll do on this one is I'll bring it down to the side, match it up down there. And then when this one's being placed, it should match up good. You might have a little left over in the corner, but it'll look good. So okay, let's do here's that. Here's the inside of mine. Here's the lid. So you have a choice. You can actually put some um, lining around there. You have enough on this to do some um, like half inch strips to go around. I'm going to leave mine alone. Let's grab our box, place our lid on, and I want to show you uh, an easy wrap for that with some um, ribbon. So for um, to decorate the outside too, before you do any um, with tags or any flowers or anything, what you can do is grab some ribbon and just kind of wrap it around the edges like this. 
bring it up. Make sure you have enough so that you can tie a bow if you want it. I think that's plenty. Okay. This is just optional. You can do this or not. It doesn't matter. Okay, so you got a bow going there. So on a tag, I'm going to grab Actually, one. Actually, I'm going to cut this one out to give a little more pink colors. Okay, so I'm going to ink around the edges here. I think that's good enough. So figure out where you want the your bow to be, and then you can place your tag accordingly. So I think I'll just, I'm going to have to get back into this box so we can, those of you that would like to continue on to figure out some neat ideas for gifts, I can still get into this. But I will glue this down. Oh, really quick. One thing I did notice that you'll want to do before you start using the hot glue, find something to lay. Your glue string sometimes will come back like it just did and get on your window. So I'm just going to cover that up for the rest of what I'm doing so I've been working on boxes, and I've already gotten into this pack several times, and I think I'm going to place maybe a couple bows here, or a couple of flowers in here. Something like that. And you don't even have to use these colors. If you want to use a different color, you can. If you prefer to use the bright blue one, instead. Well, I think that'd be really pretty. So I think that those are the flowers I'm going to be using for this. And you can add flat back pearls and do a whole bunch more than what I did. Okay, I'm going to put these back in because I'm going to be using them for some of my stuff. So those of you that will not be joining me in this next section to put some goodies in the box and some ways of saving money, um, thank you very much for joining me. And I'll see you next time. Those of you that will be joining me, I'm going to undo this, take a quick break, get my coffee, and I'll be right back. All right, so we are on to some inexpensive ways to fill this with some good gifts. So um, you have, let's start with the washi tape. Um, I am going to show you a way that you can um, give a gift of washi tape without having to buy uh, a whole roll to put it in there unless you want to. So I'm going to split this up. Um, the cardstock that I had you set aside. So why don't we do this? I have five, so I'm going to want five strips. So looking at my cardstock like this, I'll do my first cut. But it's going to be one inch by three and a quarter. So I'm going to measure over three and a quarter first, and then I'll cut the individual by one inch leftovers I'm going to set off to the side for my next thing I'll be doing. So I have five here and I'm just going to set the lid off to the side. And what I'm going to want to do is, this is wide and it will fit the whole length, is I am going to wrap this around about 12 times and that will give about a one yard of washi tape to the person. And that is plenty for a uh, given a sample. One yard is quite a bit for a project for them. And then that way, because I have several yards on this, I have enough for other gifts. And people like washi tape. I love washi tape at least. I use it in a variety of different ways. So I will start it. Now if you have a real wide one like this, I'm just going to stick this right down. And then I'm going to wrap it. This is a real sticky adhesive one. So there is one, two. Now I'm going to continue to wrap it a total of 12 times. And I'm coming around for my final. 
So and I'll just tear it off. So that way, this is still good, the adhesive, because how it's rolled, it's rolled onto itself. So there's one. I'm going to continue on with these, wrapping the washi tape around. Now some of these are, are thinner than what's here, and that's okay. So I'm going to get these. So let's work on getting all of them wrapped up and around. So once you have all your washi tape together, you can bundle it up, wrap some thin ribbon around it, and make a bow, like so. Let's get into our flower pack. I have several in here, and I'm going to grab a blue one. I'm going to grab a pink one. In the burlap ones. And I think I'll grab another small blue one so that you can still see the, the blue flower in there. Arrange it however you like. Put another blue one in there. So now with your white cardstock, you can cut a couple pieces that are two inches wide by three and a quarter inches long. This is where you can actually wrap, and you probably want a little scotch tape to hold this down. You can grab some lace and wrap it around. How much you want to give is up to you, whether it's only six inches, maybe 12, or if you want to give a yard. That is completely up to you. And we'll just wrap that around nice. And I'll just use a little scotch tape to hold that in place. And for now, I'll just stick that there. If you have any other lace, I have some blue lace, and I also have some pink. So I'm going to do the same thing and wrap this around. And for now, I'm just going to stick that in there. I've got some two-tone pink lace that I think I'm going to put in mine. Again, you don't have to put all this that I'm putting in there. These are just ideas. I'll arrange this in just a bit and what places I'd like to put what so I can spread out the colors. So let's work on those paper clips. Those are a lot of fun. So I'm going to back this up just a little bit. <clears throat> Remember the plastic cuttings when we did our 6x6 six six, um, for under the cover? That is why I said this will come in handy. So I've got some clips and you can do as, I mean, as many as you'd like. So I'm just going to stick to space this out and then I'm going to cut this to what I need. Now remember, you're only so wide in your compartments. So you definitely don't want to have this wider than one of your compartments. And the clear looks really nice. So it looks like I'm pretty good. I'm just going to cut that right here and then I'll double check myself. It will fit in there perfectly. Okay. You should have some scrap leftovers in your pack. And I have this. So all I want to do at this point is I'm just going to cut a small sliver and I'll show you what it looks like. I can even give you the measurement of how wide this is. Oh, one, two, about three sixteenths uh, of an inch wide. And I am just going to cut this what we got about an inch so this one I may not have quite an inch here when I'm done but that's okay so here's three that I could use this is where I like to use my hot glue and the first thing I'm going to do is just put that on like this I'm going to push it up underneath that little 
rounded hump in there and then I will push these back together. Then I can put a little hot glue in there. Be careful not to pinch your finger or blister your fingers there. And I can cut another strip to make sure I have enough. Okay, let's continue on. And, and down here is not where you put it. You'll want to put it up here. And you definitely just want to make sure you got that in. Push up underneath. And then you'll glue it shut. I've got all four of mine. This is where I said the mini paper blooms come in handy. And if you don't have these colors, that's okay. Or if you don't like these colors, pick something that you like. I need a wire snips. So I am going to snip off some of these. And if you'd like to do more than what I've done, great. So this is real simple. You just add your glue here and place it. Like so. And we'll do this with all of them. Now, if you do it, and you can see some of your uh, tab hanging out, you can just trim that off or spread out your flowers more. So I'm going to continue on and do those. So after you've got them all glued on, just slide them on that plastic sleeve and we can set that in our box for now. Stickles, I'm going to be putting in a bottle of stickles in mine and just stick that in there. Um, I had spoken about if you have some embellishments in your stash. I had these. I don't sell these. Um, I think I may have gotten them at Michael's or something. I'll just stick those right down in the side there. Okay. Now this is uh, an idea if you have any of those flat back pearl trim. You can just put that right on in that box. If you'd like to gather it up nicely and put a tie around it, you can. Now I cut another two inch wide by three and a quarter inch long piece. Now if you have ribbon, this is a good thing to do too, is placing some ribbon down. And again, I'll use some, some uh, scotch tape to hold that up and I'll just wrap my ribbon around. Now this is wider. I have another ribbon that I am going to put next to it and then I'm going to wrap some bling on the end. So I got my bling in here. I'll just stick that in here right here for now. Okay, I had some of these cards that came from planner packs that can be useful for a lot of different things. And I'm just going to place those right down here for now. Put those over here. Uh, the Tim Holtz cameo frames. I'm going to pull one of those out. And they also come with these little backings here. Okay, <clears throat> I have this tag that I won't be using. However, it would be nice to be able to use this print. So, I am going to get my scoring board out. And I will give you the size that that is really quick. Whoops, excuse me. I'm all packed in here. This is approximately about two and seven eighths inch across, and I've got about four and a quarter. So I am going to place this down, and I'm two and seven eighths across, so about a half inch on each side. I'm just going to 
score. Now I'm going to turn it and I'll do a half inch here, I think. I think so. So first thing, I'm just going to pull that in. And let's get a score right down the middle there. So we're about four and a quarter across at one and three quarters of an inch. Score. Now, let's fold on our little score lines here. We have one at the top, and that is the one that comes over. We have our sides. Okay. So, what I want to do, I think, is first, here is where it scores like this and comes up and over. Let's cut out that little square. Okay, how this is all going to work together is we are going to end up pulling in our sides folding this up and then this flap can come over the top like so and then we can rub a piece of ribbon around it to hold it shut so what I want to do is I'm going to grab my glue for this and all I on the bottom one here's our flap here I'll just put glue on the bottom one making sure I get it And I'll just fold that right on up, like so, and make sure that that holds. Now, for whatever reason, when you close this, it does not cover the edge. You can snip out some of the sides here, like this, even on each side you'll want to be. You can do that. Okay, and then what you can do is just, you can use your scoring board, but you can pull it over farther if you need. I'm going to slide in my cameo frame and the backing in that, and I'll bring that over. Again, if you want it up like this, you can, or you can bring it down farther. It's up to you. Okay, I am going to grab some ribbon. And you don't even have to use ribbon. You can just place it in there if you'd like. Or put a little flat back pearl. And I think that would look cute too. Let's do a flat back pearl. We are. And I'm just going to stick this right on in the box. Okay, I'm going to get into my Jolie's. And as I said before, we can actually get three different box gifts. Because I can just cut this right this way and this way. So I'm going to cut right up through here. I cannot cut a straight line to save my life. So there is something that you can throw in there. And I'll save these for a different one. The corked vials, or if you got the corked domes, these are kind of cool. You get a lot in the package. And I am going to grab out a couple of these guys. So if you have prills, that's always a good one. Prills are what goes in the center of flowers a lot of times. I have some heart of gold prills. And I'm going to fill the tiny vial with that. And then you're going to want to cork that really good. And then I'm going to run uh, some ribbon around here and tie a bow. For this other vial, I've got a large thing. They look like prills almost, but they're a, a very tiny bead and they can be used as prills too or you can use glitter. So I'm just going to pour that in. And what's cool too is if you have alternating ones you can fill the bottom with one color and then do layers too. You'll want to make sure. Now for shipping purposes you may want to put some tape 
over to make sure that this vial does not um, come apart. One thing, um, that's one thing that I wanted to say. So I'm going to grab some ribbon and I'm going to wrap it around and do a bow. Okay, I placed some tape on the top to help keep that lid down from the little cork just in case it decides to come out. Here's my little bow. I placed a really tiny flat back pearl. That is not necessary. You do not have to do that. Okay. Okay, another thing that I had done in some of the other gift boxes, and I will show you. Here's another one of my gift boxes. And here's the plastic. That's the optional part that you still have a clear plastic that you can cut to fit over. It's kind of a nice presentation. Okay, so in here I actually have a little tablet that I made. So we can also do that. Remember when we were cutting our chipboard we had some leftover stuff like this? Um, that's what I used. So I'm going to show you how um, I did it. If you have um, glue that is like a gummy glue um, for at the top for binding, um, that's great. I don't have any, so I had to improvise for mine. So there are two ways to do this. If you have, and over at the dollar store they have these, um, you can tear off a bunch of these and they will remain gummed at the top. Some of them, some of them won't. Um, and then you can cut these by what will fit in here. Or you can do it another way of which uh, I had to do. This is the more tedious way. But if you cut, and this is just regular computer paper, there's nothing fancy, it's a writing tablet, is you can cut your uh, several sheets that are about three and seven eighths inch wide by about three or four and three quarters. And just get enough there. Okay, I'm gonna use from the tablet, um, but I'm going to show you what to do if you don't have any gummed up. So there are several different ways you can try to do this. You can pinch these together and it's always good to use the gummy type adhesive up here and then you can sandwich it all together to hold it. Or uh, like I did on one is apply my glue at, at the top base this is one way, or you can actually glue individual pieces together. It is completely up to you. So once I had this all there, I wanted to make sure that all my pages at the edge got saturated. And I'm going to let that soak in. And I am dabbing, so to make sure I get in between. With any leftover chipboard, what you will do is measure from the side of your tablet to the other side and you will make a mark and clip it and you'll want two the identical size. If you have a wider band that is per perfectly fine too. So I'm going to apply glue to one side and I'm going to glue this down and I need to look. So some of these may not be adhered so that's why I said this is not the absolute correct way to do it but it's how I was able to do it to keep these together. And then we'll glue the back one on. And then we're going to cover this chipboard with some pretty paper. So now all I did with some of my scraps is I cut a piece that I can just slip right on in there inside the black border, whatever you want to do for each side and I'll glue that down. And there you have a cute little makeshift tablet. Um, you can also stick a really cute flat back pearl on there to decorate it or do whatever it is you'd like to do. I'm going to stick a flat back. So once this all dries, so the thing is, is the chipboard helps for when you are grabbing. I don't think my glue is completely dried yet, but when you're grabbing, it will hit the chipboard and tear off. 
So once yours is dry, you can stick your tablet right on in there and it will fit nicely. So those are some ideas. And before I wrap it up, you can make another one of these out of your little leftover scraps and slide in some flat back curls. Okay, so I have one of these. And how you arrange this is all according to what you would like to do. So um, I may add some more things and um, to this. The sky is the limit on this. You can do as little or as much as you want. So I think I will just slip that right on in there. I found a butterfly stamp that is new. Okay, another thing that you can do, and the last thing before we are finished here, are these 3D Zots. So I created this. This one I did not even score the, uh, the edges and fold them in. I just made a little pocket there. And I will put these in. Our plastic sheet. Okay, that was one thing we needed to do together. And that looks like it's going to fit. So I'm going to cut this. This is going to be an 8 by 8. And you can just make sure that you fit. If you need to do some trimming, do so. Mine fits in nicely. My box is all together now. So as an afterthought, I actually put some flat back trim pearl around there to kind of dress it up a little bit. You do not have to. On, on my other boxes, I just used the leftover trims and went around the edges. So that is it, and I hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you can come up with any other great embellishment to put inside the gift box, be sure to comment below the video. Happy crafting, everybody!